All right. So welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Andrew Bottom. I am the Global Internship uh, Associate Director at the UCLA International Education Office. And I am here with my uh, colleague, Anne Noguer from Puentes, um, who will be talking to you all today about um, our collaboration with Puentes in Buenos Aires for our UCLA Global Internship Program. So it's a great opportunity uh, to speak with Anne today, especially at the end when there's Q&A, to ask any questions you might have about the internship experience, the on the ground experience, what past participants have said. Um, she's definitely the expert, so I'm glad you all have joined us today. Um, I'll also be here to provide some assistance just as far as your uh, the coursework that you might be um, you know, taking while you're on the program, talking about financial aid, uh, scholarships, things like that. Um, but without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Anne um, and let her present about today's session. Thank you so much, Andrew. And just to continue with introductions, to introduce ourselves a little bit more about who we are at Puentes Abroad. We're an international education company um, and we coordinate immersion programs in Argentina and Uruguay. As Andrew said, we're partnering with UCLA's Global Internship Program to offer in-person internship experiences in Argentina in the areas of global affairs, public affairs, and political science. So that's what I'm going to be telling you a little bit more about today. Um, our team that'll be working on the program that you'll hopefully be participating in are myself. I'm the founder and CEO of Fuentes Abroad. Um, my colleagues, Alicia McLoughlin and Madeline Morris as well. Um, you'll be in touch with all of us during your application process. And then if you um, end up doing the program during the pre-program preparations and the program as well. So first a brief overview about the program what it looks like. Uh, we really work on making sure that you'll have project-based work um, to gain career advancing skills, you're learning from thoughtful mentors, and that you're becoming immersed in a new culture. Uh, we have internship program dates for the summer season confirmed to be June 18th to August 13th. Through the UCLA um, internship program, you're expected to work 32 to 40 hours per week. Uh, do keep in mind as well, Andrew will talk a little bit more, more about this later, but you'll be also enrolled in the summer aid coursework, uh, which will be taking place June 20th to August 26th. While completing the internship, you'll be enrolled in one or two UCLA online courses for four to eight um, academic credits. So let's talk a little bit more about the program itself. The key part of the program, of course, being the internship. The internship experience, we are looking to provide you with an internship experience that first of all, has really meaningful work. So you'll be completing a specific project or several projects that are contributing directly to the mission of the organization or company where you're working. Um, and you'll have close mentorship at your internship site. You'll have a direct supervisor at the company or organization where you're working who will be responsible for training you supervising you, overseeing day-to-day, week-to-week progress on your project work and mentoring you. And then we're making sure that the place where you're working is really high-performing nonprofit government agency or business working in different diverse impactful fields. What are some of those fields? You can see here on the screen that at Puentes Abroad, we offer internships for many different types of fields. For the areas that we're working um, with together with UCLA, um, field, particular fields of interest might be development and sustainability, law and human and civil rights, um, community development, government and public policy. Um, but you can see that we have lots of different approaches to the areas of interest for the internships. And an important note is that to participate in the internships, there's no minimum level of Spanish. Um, we have in internships available in both English and Spanish, we make clear the expectation that the more Spanish you have, the more options you'll have in terms of the types of organizations where you'd be able to work and the types of projects that you can take to tackle during your internship. During the internship itself, um, we are providing oversight from Puentes. Actually, even before you start your internship, we'll be working with your supervisor at your internship organization and you to complete together an internship work agreement that maps out in advance, what are the expectations? What specific project work will you be doing? What are the deliverables? So that all of these details and expectations are aligned before you even begin your internship. 
Then during your internship, you'll have, a de you'll have a designated Puente staff mentor who will be overseeing your professional development and your internship experience. With your Puente staff mentor and your supervisor, you'll have three oversight meetings that we'll participate in and facilitate. An initial meeting to review together that internship work agreement again and make any adjustments, updates, make sure we're all aligned for you to have a strong start. Midway through, you'll, we'll have another meeting with your supervisor and you to look back on learnings, challenges, successes from the first part of the internship, look ahead to updated objectives for the second part of the internship. And then we'll also have a closing meeting, the final week of the internship, to provide a nice space for reflection, reflection with your supervisor and you. And also looking forward to your future career plans and academic goals. And then throughout there, we'll be providing you with ongoing support to do any troubleshooting, make sure that your internship is experience, experience is as engaging and successful as possible. The internship itself is complemented by immersion activities. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about what that looks like, what you'd be doing outside of the internship office. So we want to help you get a solid start to your experience abroad by giving you an orientation on living and working in Argentina with lots of tips on health, safety, transportation, cultural immersion, anything and everything, you name it, we'll discuss in that orientation meeting the weekend that you arrive in Buenos Aires. We'll also do a city tour um, to explore the sites of your new home city on arrival. And then we'll do um, during the program, a day trip to an estancia or a typical Argentine ranch outside of the city um, with horseback riding an Argentine asado, which is a barbecue, vegetarian options too, um, and get to enjoy a kind of life outside of the city too. We'll also invite you to our Puentes Presenta seminar speaker series where we invite um, expert guest speakers to talk about different topics on Argentine history and culture, as well as global work trends and professional development topics. And during your program, we'll do a one-on-one -on -one coaching topic with you um, on the topic, uh, coaching topic, coaching session with you on the topic of your choice. That might be resume building, interviewing skills, um, time and life management, international job curation. And then we'll give you access to an online participant portal that has a wealth of resources and information for recommendations um, on living in Buenos Aires and nearby destinations and how to make the most of your program experience. An optional um, component that many of our interns choose to, to complement their internship with would be Spanish classes. These are taught by native Spanish speakers, um, strictly in Spanish. Uh, they can be private classes that are scheduled according to your internship hours, and you can register for these once you confirm your participation in the program and you can coordinate the dates and hours with us. These are not um, Spanish classes that are able to be used for UCLA course credit, um, so this is something outside and additional, but we do find that participants find it helpful if they're looking for extra language immersion. Then to tell you a little bit about how you'll be supported during the program um, by Puentes. We'll do a pre-departure webinar before you arrive to Argentina to help you prepare for your travels. As I mentioned before, you'll have access to a portal with many detailed guides and local information. When you're um, arriving to the airport, we will pick you up and take you to your program coordinated housing and get you checked in. And we'll give you a welcome pack that has a local cell phone SIM card, local transport card and tote bag and maps. Um, and then we'll do an orientation seminar uh, that first weekend when you arrive um, in your home city to help you get settled. And then we'll also during the program be on hand 24 seven for emergency and general support. We will be providing housing during your time in country. Um, we will have shared apartments with a private room for the eight week duration of the program. Um, these apartments are generally shared with two to four other international students who may or may not be from UCLA. Um, and all of the housing includes bedding, towels, weekly cleaning, and Wi-Fi. These are located in the residential neighborhoods of Recoleta, Palermo, and Belgrano in Buenos Aires. Um, and so you're in easy um, jumping distance to your internship sites and to many different areas in the city to explore. 
So next steps on how to um, apply, I'll let Andrew walk you through some of these steps, but you can see on the screen here um, that the application deadline is December 5th, and you can see the dedicated websites for the Global Affairs Program, Political Science, and Public Affairs, which are the three tracks that we'll be having in Buenos Aires for 2022. Um, note that we don't um, want you to submit your application through Puentes Abroad. Please do submit through UCLA first um, to become a part of the UCLA Global Internship, Global Internship Program. So Andrew, with that, I'll let you walk through a little bit more about the application steps and some UCLA specific information. All right, thank you, Anne. Um, so I'll send along the links in the chat in just a minute to the application in case you haven't been to the website yet. But first, just wanted to go through the application steps. So as Anne was mentioning, you will apply directly through the UCLA website. Um, on the website itself, um, you will be asked to, or on the application itself, you'll fill out a general biographical application. And then in addition, you'll be asked to submit your resume. So make sure that you update your resume. Um, this will be what will be sent out to possible organizations or companies that you might intern with. So make sure that um, it looks clean, it looks neat, that you've had you know, a colleague or the career center review it. Um, in addition, there will be uh, four questions. Um, it's called your motivation to enroll questionnaire that you will be asked um, prior to uh, submitting your application. These questions are more kind of getting to know you. So a general introduction of you know, who you are and why you're interested in the program. Um, you know, your career interests, like what you want to do through the internship and how it matches with your career goals, um, why you think you're a great candidate for the program, your interest in Buenos Aires. So I'll show you in a, in a minute here where to access those questions prior to um, submitting your application. You will want to write those answers down on a Word document and save it and then copy it and paste it into your application um, because there's no way to save the application when you're currently in it. So you'll want to kind of think through those answers prior to actually um, submitting. Um, once you submit your application, I'll do a general review to make sure that you are eligible for the program. Um, and as long as everything looks good to go, I will send it along to the Puentes team. Um, the Puentes team will schedule with you um, a time to uh, meet for an advising session. Um, you will do an advising session with Anne or one of her colleagues um, to discuss uh, more about your interest in the program. Um, it's a great opportunity you know, to mention you know, why you're interested, what your career goals are, what sort of internships you're looking for in Buenos Aires. Um, and it's a good opportunity for Anne and her team to figure out whether your career interests match with the available types of placements there in Buenos Aires. Um, once that uh, advising session is done, uh, and all the students' advice sessions have been completed, which will wrap up probably in mid-December. Um, I will get back to um, all of the applicants to let you know whether you've been accepted into the program. Um, once you've accepted into the program, that's at that point when we ask to put down your non-refundable deposit and then eventually put down the remaining uh, fees for the program. Um, once you've been officially paid for the program or submitted your financial aid application, um, at that point, um, we move on to the second step here, which is um, the interview process. So um, you will be doing interviews with um, potential job sites. Um, and so your resume again will be sent out to different organizations or companies um, that will see who might be interested in interviewing you um, for uh, an internship for that summer. Um, there'll be feedback that, the, that uh, Anne will get in contact with you or one of the Puente's uh, colleagues to see um, how you felt about the interview, whether you liked the, the, the internship site, whether you thought it was a good match. They'll also talk with the internship site manager to see if it's a good match on their end. Um, if it's a good match for everybody, then you'll be matched and you'll sign your internship contract and things are great. If it's not, then we'll continue on to another interview until you are eventually placed. Um, do you have anything, anything to mention about that, in, that interview process and um, exactly of, of it's kind of a linear process, correct? The students aren't going to be interviewing with lots of different companies at the same time, organizations, they'll do one and then move on to another one until they eventually are placed. Right. So based on your application materials and our conversation with you, we'll share your um, profile at different uh, internship sites to see if they'd be interested in interviewing you. And then we'll reach out to you um, to directly introduce you to the supervisors at those internship sites that would like to interview you. In some cases, we'll start you out with one interview, sometimes with two interviews. And then, as Andrew said, um, you know, we'll, collect, we'll be collecting your feedback and the feedback from the internship sites to see where there's a match. And we'll let you know once you have a match and once you um, confirm that you'd like to accept that placement, then we confirm the, that we finalize the internship placement with the company or organization. 
Excellent. And then there's a question right now I think we'll address um, just because it's it's uh, contextual to the slide. Will the interviews be in Spanish? That's a great question. So we will um, be looking at your Spanish language ability um, as part of your application packet to consider um, which possible internship opportunities you would be able to pursue. You can take into consideration that if you're looking um, to do an internship in Spanish, and if the opportunity that you're interviewing for requires, um, you know, a fluent or native level of Spanish, that it could be fair game for the interview to be in Spanish. If you have only beginner level Spanish um, and you're more looking for an internship, um, you know, that uses English, English language skills, then you shouldn't be anticipating having that interview in Spanish. And if you have any questions on that, you can always let us know. Perfect. And then if you want to move over to the next slide here, and um, what I'm going to talk about here in a second um, is go to the website and I'm going to show you a little bit more about the coursework, the program costs, and how to access financial aid and scholarships. So I'm going to share my screen here. All right. So I'm going to throw this in here. This is the general link. Um, and then you can, uh, you click on this link, you're able to find from there as you scroll down global affairs, political science, or public affairs. Just to note, global affairs is just the category we named. It's not an actual major at UCLA, but it's for the International Institute majors or minors. So we have those all listed up here. Um, in the sense of how the process works for the application, it's the same no matter which major you're in. So I'm just going to access currently um, under global affairs, the intern in Buenos Aires. Um, when you're on the website, you'll see here um, some general information. You'll see the program fees listed, and I'll show you the breakdown in a second. Um, you will notice that there is a COVID-19 vaccine requirement to, uh, to participate in this program um, uh, by Puentes, but also it's uh, just in the sense of being able to uh, enter Argentina and be able to participate in everything. It's um, something that's necessary. So um, something to note, uh, as we go down uh, here, uh, I just wanted to show a couple things. The eligibility to talk about really briefly. Um, it's a minimum of 90 units completed by end of spring 2022. That can include transfer credit or your AP credit. Um, so you're a rising junior in a sense going into the summer, 3.0 GPA or above and good academic standing. Um, You'll see here under internship placements, there's some examples of placements that you can look at that are past students that have um, done the Puentes program and what sort of internships that they have participated with. Please note, these are not guaranteed internship placements that you will have during your program, um, but they're examples of what you might expect um, placement to look like. Um, it's possible that these organizations could be looking for interns this summer and that you might be a good match. So it's, you know, if you notice one that looks exactly kind of what you're thinking about, you can still mention it to Anne so they know, oh, you know, that either this might have a placement available or maybe there's similar organizations that they work with that maybe would be a good match for you. So these are kind of just ways to kind of uh, see what's available. There's a lot more placements available that the Puentes teams works with, a lot of different companies and organizations, but these are just a couple ideas. Um, you go down to budget and financial aid, you'll notice here discusses um, both the program fee and then the additional costs. The program fee is going to include your tuition. It's going to include uh, your um, the program fee as far as like your housing that's uh, for the program, uh, your insurance, so all that. So the housing insurance, um, your tuition, uh, and then just the health and safety and everything that Puentes provides for us um, is all together in the program fee. And that's what we'll, we'll be put on your Bruin bill account. Um, the airfare and meals and incidentals, those are really estimates. So it's possible you could get a, a more affordable ticket than 1500 to go to Argentina. It's possible as your ticket could be slightly above, but giving you a general estimate. Um, your meals and incidentals will really be based on your spending habits. Um, you will have access to a kitchen, so you could be cooking a lot. You could be eating out a lot. Um, Argentina, luckily, is very economical for U.S. students. So even eating out, you can still find ways to make it very economical. Um, and then something to note is you'll, as Anna was mentioning, you can see a little bit more about the on-location accommodations as a reminder, and then some general information about travel to Buenos Aires. Um, as we move forward, I want to focus on the curriculum specifically. Um, so for each of the different majors, you will have a 195 CE course. So in the case of global affairs track, you'll be doing the international area studies 195 CE. Public Affairs, it's the Public Affairs 195 CE, 
and political science is the political science 195 CE. So under the course description, you will be able to see how that course may or may not count towards elective credits uh, for your major. Um, so it's something to make note of when you're going on the website. Um, additionally, there is the CESC 130 course. This is the Intercultural Communication in the Global Workplace course, four additional units. Um, a, a same thing, um, you'll notice below if it will count towards anything in your major. Um, so for public affairs, I know that it does count uh, for upper division units for the major and minor. You'll see here for the global affairs track, some of the different um, majors and minors that it will count for. Um, and then for political science, I believe that it does not count um, for the major. Um, something else to note is if you want to apply for financial aid, you must be enrolled in both courses. So you need eight minimum units to enroll in financial aid. Uh, you can look at, again, the curriculum section on PolySci or Public Affairs when you're on your appropriate website. Something else to note is on the finance section, I'll put this in the chat here. This is where you can find scholarship information. So if you are planning to apply for uh, financial aid, there are scholarships also available. In addition, these are a separate application from financial aid, but some great scholarships. So if you scroll down here to global internships, the ones that you would be uh, eligible for possibly would be the Global Internship Program Scholarship. This is up to $3,000 um, going towards your program. This is just students who are financially eligible in the Global Internship Program. So it's a smaller applicant group than like a UCLA wide uh, scholarship. So definitely apply if you are interested and eligible. Um, additionally, the Shirley and Walter Wang Scholarship. This is for what's considered quote unquote middle income students. If you click on uh, the link, you'll see what that income range is for your FAFSA and whether you might meet those eligibility requirements. And that's for $2,000 for any study abroad student in the summer. And then additionally, I don't know if it's coming back this year, but something to take pay attention to is the Center for Community Engagement Internship Award. Uh, last year was offered, um, and this would include political science too. Um, this needs, needs to be updated on our website, but it was offered $5,000 for anyone doing a internship with a, a nonprofit organization. So something um, that you might qualify for if they bring this award back. So we're still waiting to hear. Additionally, if you are a Pell Grant recipient, I highly, highly suggest that you apply for the Gilman International Scholarship. So the Gilman International Scholarship provides up to $5,000 for students who are um, studying abroad and they're Pell Grant recipients. It does require a project to be completed um, when you return to campus. I know that it usually in the past, it only applies to students who are um, interning or studying abroad in a level one or two advisory um, country. Um, now, most countries around the world are, are um, at travel advisory of a level three or a level four. Um, but I know that the Gilman Scholarship has made some exceptions for level three countries. So I don't know if Argentina currently is in that exception group, but it might be. They keep adding different countries to that group as things get better with um, the spread of COVID. So in mitigation efforts, so something to pay attention to. It's about a 25% acceptance rate for students who apply for the scholarship nationwide. But UCLA has had a really great um, uh, I guess, um, I guess just qualitatively seeing how usually students have applied to this scholarship, we've had a much higher acceptance rate. So I would say just from my own past few years of looking at applications, we maybe have 40% or so of students who apply that do get that award. So something to definitely apply to, and it's a large chunk of, of money that can go towards your uh, program. Um, so I think that's some of the general information from the website. If you have any additional questions, of course, you can always reach out to me. But I'm going to throw it back to Anne for now before uh, we go to Q&A. Great. Thank you, Andrew. Um, those are really the main points that I wanted to cover as well. Um, so I'm happy to go ahead and, and open it up for, for Q&A. Um, if anyone, as Andrew said, you can either put your questions into the chat or simply unmute yourself and share your question with us. I see we have a hand raised from Anna, if you'd like to just unmute and share your question. Hi, thank you uh, for taking the time to present to us. Um, I had a question about um, living with other students. So I know you mentioned that that we're just living with students in the Puentes program and you know they may or not be from UCLA. Um, I was wondering if they would also be part of 
like so for example I would be applying to like political science ones and I was wondering like if I would be living with students also in the political science program and if we would have like similar schedules or if it's more just like an apartment and everybody's kind of doing their own thing great question so with the housing um you'll be in an apartment and have um apartment mates but you'll have your own private bedroom and um your roommates might be other um, interns but they will not necessarily be working in the same type of organization as you um, but you know their schedules will probably be pretty similar um, the work hours that you will have will depend on the office hours of the company or organization where you're working so whether it's nine to four or 10 to five or uh, something in the middle there, um, but you know, we'll be on, on similar schedules to, to you um, in terms of kind of the, the day-to-day -day and how that looks. And then one thing I was just gonna note is- Okay, uh, thank you. A lot of the, a lot of the time, probably the, the location that you might be placed in the apartment too may depend on where your internship is located as well. So if you're placed in a certain site, they'll most likely want to place you in an apartment building that's a little bit closer commute wise um, than maybe a student who's also public affairs, but has a, a maybe a internship downtown and you're doing something in a neighborhood that's further out. So Exactly. And I see we have a question in the chat. How competitive is the application process? Would you like to talk about that from, from the UCLA end first, Andrew? And then I can speak about it in terms of the um, internship placement part. Sure. Yeah. So as far as the application process to getting into the program, um, you know, every year is always different by the number of students who are applying. We do have a, a full new major that is also added. So political science students are also allowed to go um, to Buenos Aires. Um, you know, our goal for the program is to have about 15 to 20 students that might be going to Buenos Aires. Um, you know, our goal is to place as many students as possible that, um, you know, their career goals and experiences, uh, you know, match up with what is available internship placement wise in Buenos Aires, but there's not a, a limitless number of placements. And so our, our goal is to match the best students with um, you know, to hopefully succeed in those placements that we have available. So it's hard to tell you exact, you know, amount of, of what the competition will be like. This is the first time that we have offered Buenos Aires as a location for students. Um, in the past, um, the other program that's located in Latin America for these majors is Colombia, and that's been a popular program for students to participate in, I think specifically because a lot of students do enjoy improving their Spanish speaking language skills. Um, but uh, I guess my my advice is just to you know specifically when you're filling out that motivation to a role questionnaire is to take it you know think through it thoroughly. Um, it's a great way to describe what your goals are um, you know for the program. And then additionally, when you are meeting with Anne or one of the colleagues on the Puentes team, um, you know to have in mind you know some of your career goals. Um, the hardest thing to do on their side is if you say, oh, I'm interested in interning in Buenos Aires, but don't have a real idea of what you're wanting to do. Um, so having a general idea is great. You don't want to be so specific that say I have to work at this specific company or organization because that will be very hard on their end to make that to follow through with that type of placement. But having a general idea of the field that you're interested in, the type of work you would want to do is really important. Great. And just to follow up on what Andrew is saying, um, you know, we will be selecting you through the advising sessions as well, through as well as through UCLA's review of your application. If you're accepted into the program and then moving on to the internship interviewing process, there will be some internship sites that will be more competitive than others um, in terms of um, you know, the actual interviewing process that you'll then be doing with directly with the internship sites. But we'll be working with you closely to make sure that you'll um, be placed at an internship site in your field of interest um, and that you have you know, good options there. Um, so while some of the internship sites might be more competitive than others, as Andrew said, if you can hit a happy medium there by telling us what your interest areas are, what your objectives are, um, but also allowing for some flexibility and also trusting us that we're um, able to really make some nice matches between your uh, ideal internship areas of interest and career objectives and the internship opportunities that we have available here. Um, so, but great question on that. Uh, I see another question in the chat. Would UCLA students live close by and have some community in that respect or would be, be kind of disparate? Um, so we certainly look to um, provide a very nice cohort experience for um, 
in one sense, the UCLA uh, interns who will be participating in the program. As the Andrew mentioned, um, you know, we more determine housing based on location and prioritizing that your commute to your internship office um, will be a reasonable distance. Um, and then we also make sure that there is an overall Puentes cohort experience. Um, from Puentes, we work with other universities uh, such as um, UNC, Princeton, Cornell, University of Pennsylvania. And so you'll not only be a part of the UCLA cohort, but you'll also be a part of the larger Puentes cohort. Um, and we'll be doing ori the orientation activities, different um, cultural immersion activities. The Puentes presents a seminar speaker series that I mentioned, this will be happening as a cohort. So you'll have plenty of opportunities for independent immersion um, and exploration, as well as, um, you know, group and social cohort um, bonding too. And with UCLA, we'll do a pre-departure orientation um, prior to going, and then we'll also do, our plenty of will provide orientation when you arrive. So you'll get to know the UCLA cohort pretty well and be able to change information, even if you are living, I'm sure you'll be with probably with another UCLA student, most likely in a similar area as you, but in case, you know, not everyone is in the same neighborhood, you'll still be connected and had an opportunity to meet prior to uh, getting to Buenos Aires and once you get there. Um, there's a couple more questions. I'm going to drop just as well my email um, in the chat as well. So if you do have any questions and want to reach out to me afterwards, it is there. Um, but a couple of questions that I saw as well. Um, at what point do we get a decision on whether we are accepted into the program so that we can have contingency plans? So um, you should know uh, around the start of January. So our goal usually is the end of the first week, start of the second week of January to let you know if you're accepted into the program. Sometimes if the students uh, are applying much earlier in the application cycle, which we encourage you to do, um, then we're able to do all those advising appointments and able to send out acceptances earlier. So we have to uh, complete all the advising prior to sending out decisions, but in some cases, there's certain programs that we have been able to let students know the middle of December before winter break of whether they've been accepted. Um, but I like to say, I like to promise more so um, early January in case we aren't able to wrap up all of those meetings prior to um, advising appointments prior to um, the January. Um, we have a question. I have a couple more questions in the chat, but I'm gonna go um, to Wintna. Uh, I see your hand raised. Yeah. Wintna. Yes, thank you so much. Um, I had a question about like the different tracks offered with the program, because you guys mentioned like there's the global affairs track, the political science track, and then the public affairs track. So I'm going to be like a global health minor. And I was wondering if this internship program is open to global health minors and if there are like opportunities for someone who wanted to do like a more health focused site. Is that possible or is that does that like align with this specific internship program? So I can answer from the UCLA end and then I'll let you answer an end from the Puentes end. So yeah, so for the global affairs track, that would be perfect for a global health minor. Um, I believe the 195 CE course, um, you can, similar to the other majors and minors in, in our institute, um, you'll, uh, when you're doing that course, you'll work with the TA to make sure your, your final paper basically is focused on global health, like a topic focused, you know, that's within global, the theme of global health, and then that could be counted towards uh, your minor. Um, so we do like to, for this global affairs track, allow students in global health minors to um, have internship experiences that are focused on health related um, organizations. And then I'll throw it to Anne for as far as placement types of opportunities. Great. So in the areas of public health as well as medicine, um, we have a few different approaches for those types of um, internships. You could be working at a nonprofit organization that's focusing on public health projects, um, areas such as maternal and infant health care, um, you know, HIV AIDS awareness, um, or, you know, um, malnutrition, um, or you could be working in uh, more public policy that's focused on health-related topics and advocacy, raising awareness about different health issues, or we even have um, for-profit companies that are working on innovative approaches to health um, and, you know, at the intersection of technology and medicine. Um, so there are lots of different, different ways that we can approach that. Um, but I think, you know, Buenos Aires, it's a really interesting destination for, for students that are looking on into the global health area and that, that type of field. Okay, thank you guys so much. Of course. 
Um, another question in the chat was asking um, if we being a Spanish and poli sci double major, would that make acceptance uh, more likely? Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that would be the end determiner, uh, determinant, so whether you get in the program or not, but I think in general, having Spanish language skills is definitely a benefit. As Anne mentioned, it's not a requirement, but it does open up more internship opportunities, especially if you're um, going to be interacting with the community. Um, knowing Spanish is definitely going to be um, you know, an advantage. Um, also, there's, of course, more workplaces that will be fully Spanish speaking. Um, but again, we want to emphasize that if you don't have Spanish language skills or you're a language learner, it is still a great opportunity. Um, I know last cycle, um, specifically in our Columbia program, we had a lot of students who were language learners that wanted to help improve their Spanish language skills. And that actually was really excellent um, opportunity for them. And they ended up doing their internship mostly in Spanish because um, they had an intermediate level and in the end were able to improve those skills quite a bit. Um, but I think it is definitely something to emphasize, I think, in your application, because um, it's uh, it's good to know and it's helpful for, I think, Puente's team to, to be aware of what sort of skills that you do have um, in the in language skills. Um, additionally, are internships paid? Um, internships are not paid, so they are all academic, so they're all for academic credit. Um, and then another question is how many students are typically accepted into the program? So our goal is probably about between 15 to 20 students most likely will be our cohort. Um, so, uh, you know, it really depends on the, the cycle and the, the availability of, of placements um, that, uh, around something like that will be the, the USA cohort. Any other questions? Excellent. These have been great questions. I know that Andrew's sharing his contact information and um, you know, we'll also look forward to answering additional questions that you have during the advising sessions. Um, but thank you all so much for taking the time to sign on today. Uh, we're really excited that you're interested in internships in Buenos Aires in Argentina. Um, so thank you for joining again. Uh, Andrew, are you seeing any other questions on your end? Uh, I see one more. Um, it says, can we ask for a review of our application prior to turning them in? Um, unfortunately, I can't review anything only because I have to make it fair to everyone, but I would suggest um, if you do want someone to review your application, uh, specifically let's say your resume, um, you can use, I'm going to type it in here. Uh, if you search VMOC UCLA, that's a great way to um, uh, use the Career Center resources for your resume to make sure that it looks really nice and put together before submitting. Uh, and then as far as um, those, the motivation to enroll questionnaire, um, of course, I can't review those myself. But um, again, I think, uh, you know, if you have a friend or a colleague that wants to review them for you, that would be, you know, great. Um, you can always ask me questions if you're unsure of how to answer something. I'm, I'm more than helpful to give you some general guidance, but I can't uh, review the actual answers. Um, a, a good mention in here was undergraduate writing center can also help with resumes. Yes. So great, great point. So um, if you're interested in someone assisting the undergraduate writing center is great for that. Um, I see another question here. Um, are there any alums of the program that we would be able to point us to? Um, so as far as UCLA, um, this, as far as the global internship program, this is the first year that we are sending students to Buenos Aires. So unfortunately, as far as on my end, I'm unable to send, uh, I don't have any alumni to send you to. Um, we do have our global internship program scholarship that a part of that piece is to be an ambassador for the program. And so we're hoping for future years, we will have ambassadors from the Buenos Aires program to uh, connect you with, but I'll throw that to Anne in case there is an option, you know, as far as alumni from other universities. Absolutely. So I'm just going to copy into the chat here um, a page on our website, puentesabroad.com backslash testimonials. There you can um, at least read a little bit more about some prior interns' experiences. And then if anyone is, um, you know, during the advising session, if that's something that you're interested in speaking with a former participant, you can let us know during the advising session and we can make that possible and put you in touch with a former participant to hear about their experience, ideally trying to connect you with someone who did an internship in a field similar to one that you're interested in. Um, Says, so how flexible are the arrival and departure dates? Um, so in the sense of the actual program, it's important that you're there for the duration of the program. So the actual, the, the, if the program is the dates, I forget, it's the 17th, I believe. Let me see here. It is. Um, 
So the dates are June 18th to August 13th. So June 18th through August 13th, you will need to be in Buenos Aires during that time. Um, if you are interested in arriving slightly earlier or staying slightly later, um, that's okay. Um, however, just note that you won't be able to have housing from Puentes during that time. So in the sense of our program where we're responsible for you, yeah, it's during those actual dates of the program. Also, your health insurance is only available during the actual dates of the program, um, but you would not be able to leave like a week early to go um, back home. Part of the internship um, is that 195CE course, and it's a requirement for an eight-week internship. So you do need to complete eight weeks of internship in order to complete that course. Um, I know, I think for US students or um, entering the country, um, is it 90 days in general that they're available to be in the country? So um, again, it is possible to extend on the end or come slightly early, but I believe your graduation or the end of the sp spring quarter is like a week before the program. So it's not a lot of time probably to show up early. Um, there's a couple other questions. Uh, will it be winter there during the summer? So it is the it is opposite seasons than here um, in the United States. So it will be winter time. Um, and I guess I'll let Anne talk about there's a question. Is there skiing close by or what activities? <laughs> great. These are great questions. Um, so Buenos Aires, it, it is the exact opposite season of the United States and Argentina uh, in Buenos Aires. But you can imagine Buenos Aires is a mild winter. We're not getting snow in Buenos Aires, um, you know, so yes, you'll need a kind of midweight jacket, um, but it's it's quite nice weather, quite, you know, sunny. Um, skiing close by, the closest skiing close by, there are three main skiing centers in Argentina in Mendoza, Bariloche, and Ushuaia. Um, those are each from the domestic airport in Buenos Aires, um, anywhere from an hour and a half to two and a half hours flight away. Um, so, you know, not, terribly far away, um, good skiing. The skiing time here is usually in July. Um, so maybe July and August, maybe that's something if, as Andrew mentioned, if you wanna stay after your internship, keeping in mind that, you know, your UCLA, UCLA interns would be for those program dates. But if you wanna stay on and travel, add skiing on to the end of your time and country, that's a great option. And through that portal that I mentioned that has a lot of resources, we also have on there different destination guides for major cities um, and destinations around Argentina that um, students enjoy traveling to. So we can help with, you know, recommendations for any, um, you know, any self-led travel that you're interested in doing after the program. Any other questions? These are great. I appreciate it. I think it's helpful for everyone as well. Okay. Well, uh, again, feel free to reach out if you have any questions prior to submitting your application or during the application process. Otherwise, we hope to see your application soon um, if you are going to apply. And uh, thank you so much for joining today. Have a great afternoon, everyone. And uh, yeah, we hope to see you in the program. Thank you all so much for joining.